Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Argent Sergeant and this gentleman with the funky facial hair right here is Chinpachi. This video in this wonderful idyllic location here is the third in a series on survival. I've created Survival Helper for the mutual entertainment and education of both you, the viewer, and myself, Argent Sergeant, as I have not yet completed Minecraft in all my years on this earth. So with that in mind, I should hope there are a couple of useful little tidbits in it that you might find helpful. If you liked the video, or if you found it particularly educational in any way, I would love to hear from you. I'd very much like it if you liked it by pressing the like button. And if you want to learn more or join me on my journey, I would be honoured to have you join the ranks of my subscribers. All 13 of them. As I go through the video, if there's anything I miss out on or anything you didn't know before, I'd be interested to hear from you in the comments section as well. Now I think that's quite enough of me walking into random things while asking you to like and subscribe to the video. Let's get straight down to business. Now the eagle-eyed among you would have noticed that my outro sequence showed you me stumbling upon a little block that looks like this. Now this is iron ore and it is one of the most fantastic, useful materials in the game. And I shall tell you for why. It's a huge improvement on stone for a number of reasons, but in its current state, it's not actually that helpful to us at all. I mean, it looks all right, you could build stuff with it, but all the time you don't have a farm, the most useful thing you can do with it is smelt it. And it smelts down into ingots. And here's some I made earlier. Once you've got ingots in your inventory, you're able to make shears, helmets, breastplates, leggings, boots, blocks, minecarts, nuggets, cauldrons, buckets, bars, pressure plates, doors, and trapdoors. Once you get some nuggets, you can then make chains, you can make ingots out of nuggets, and if you grab a torch, you can make lanterns, which are quite cute, though rather expensive for what they are. Far more importantly than that, however, they can be used as a substitute for cobblestone when manufacturing tools. There are a multitude of things that iron ingots give you access to, and another one of those helpful things is the humble shield. So you can grab a shield, you can grab a chest plate, leggings, helmets, and boots. And that is a full set of armor. Dang it, I fell in the chicken hole. You can equip your armor in one of two ways that I'm aware of. The first one is simply open your inventory and put them in the relevant slot. Or you can hold it in your hand and right click. Boom, 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 and shield. With the shield in this hand, you'll be able to punch and block like so. But you can also move it over to the other hand by pressing F or by picking it up and putting it in the appropriate slot on your character. Using the right mouse button, you can then block. This allows you to block incoming arrows as well as attacks, and it also absorbs some of the blast damage from creepers. Fantastic, we are now armored. We have better protection against the monsters. I'm also going to manufacture myself an iron pickaxe. I won't use all my ingots on pickaxes though, because I can still keep making stone ones all the time I don't have an infinite source of iron. So stocking up a little bit on these useful tools and because I have got a good amount, I will make myself a sword. So once we've got all this gear, what is it that we're gonna be doing with it? Well, we're gonna be going caving. I've already done a little bit of it. That's how I was able to get all that iron. But, excuse me, I'm just dealing with this fella. The premise of caving is effectively that you are going into open ravines such as this in order to mine out valuable resources that you can use later. Already we can see there's some more iron down there and just down in that spot over there That is some gold and more iron on the right there It's much easier to stumble upon vast quantities of this stuff when you go into a cave like this one We find coal we can find iron we can find that gold we spotted earlier But if you go deeper and deeper and deeper down You can find some even more useful and rare stuff Right see this stuff here we try to avoid that. I personally like to just get a couple of blocks handy and make sure that it's blocked off so that I can't just walk straight into it. That's lava. It will burn you alive and you will die. And if your items land in it, they will be gone as well. Goodness, that is an, that's a lot of creepers. Jeepers, creepers. <laughs> I've already been down this far. So it turns out I have to go deeper. Okay. As I go down and descend deeper and deeper and deeper, you will observe that I'm placing my torches on the right. Now, the reason for this is because if I turn around and go back the other way, they're on the left. I always know whether or not I'm going deeper into the cave or whether or not I'm making my way out. 
Really useful system of navigation. Definitely recommend doing that. Creeper up there. Here he comes. Here comes another one. Oh my goodness. The issue about caverns like this is that they do get a bit risky to try and traverse because there are lots of blind spots and monsters can come at you from lots of different directions. And it's a very stressful time sometimes. Now, if you like to play in peaceful like I used to, and I really wouldn't blame you, then you won't have this problem. You'll just get to explore nice and freely and you can feel relaxed and not feel terribly threatened. I, however, like to live dangerously. Now, here's some gold. If you try and break that with a stone pickaxe, it will break the block, but you won't harvest any gold. That is total wasted effort. You need an iron pick in order to get gold ore. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the classic cave exploration, kill the monsters you run into, pick up whatever ores you find, and then go back to the surface to play with the new toys that you're able to make as a result. But I'm also going to try and talk you through some basic caving etiquette, particularly in regards to hazards like this. You see this particle effect here. Your computer might not have the processing power to create that, so it's always worth watching out for the change in texture between stone and gravel. If you place a torch on the side of gravel here, it will force all of this to update and it will suddenly start to fall like that. So it's more the act of removing the torch that does that. My mistake. There we go. And if you're underneath it when that happens, you will suffocate and you might die. So let's keep going deeper. Ah, iron, coal, more importantly, that blue stuff. This blue stuff is lapis. Lapis lazuli, lapis lazuli. It's got a Z in it. I'm not sure what the proper pronunciation is. However, it's pretty. It's a gorgeous colour. And it's useful, believe it or not, like many of the things you'll stumble upon down in caves that aren't stone. Okay, because I've got plenty of torches up in this area, I'm going to be able to come back here later at my own leisure to keep harvesting these materials. But more importantly, we've stumbled upon some redstone. Break redstone, just like the last ones. Just like gold, you have to break redstone with an iron pick. If you break it with a stone pick, you'll get nothing out of it. Fantastic. So in our journey down here so far, we have managed to get hold of 38 lapis, 12 redstone, 30 coal, 16 gold ore, and another 18 iron ore. And I haven't even picked up everything I've seen in terms of iron. So that's your basic introduction to caving. But the thing we all are after in Minecraft, the thing everybody's obsessed with getting hold of, the thing we use to drive our Minecraft economies is deeper than this. We're looking for diamonds. If you hit the F3 key, we refer to our coordinates earlier. X, Y, Z, our Y value is 10. Diamonds spawn anywhere between 5 and 12. So we are in approximately the right region already. We are almost as deep as we can possibly go in the game. And so what we do when we're down this deep is we start digging tunnels. Now we have to be careful, but as you continue to dig, the chance that you're going to stumble upon diamonds increases. You've got to make sure these spots are lit as you create them because if monsters spawn behind you, you could be in for a bad time. But as you continue to dig at this level, you'll find plenty more redstone. Occasionally you might run into some lapis, but it's more commonly going to be redstone and iron. Two important tips to note down here. Before you go caving, it's very useful to bring with you logs. Why is that? Well, because with logs, you can make planks. With planks, you can make a crafting bench. And with a crafting bench, you can make pretty much anything else. Get some more planks, get some more sticks, use some cobblestone, make a furnace, lay down your furnace, put some coal in, put some iron in, and now we can make some more ingots to create a new iron pickaxe for when this one runs out. If you find your inventory is totally full of cobblestone, andesite, all other bits and bobs that you don't need, you can sack them off into your chest. If you feel like your chances of survival aren't great, it also pays to leave your valuables in there as well. Four new ingots, sticks, ingots, new pickaxe, and I have no quibbles about just continuing to push on through. So that's the first tip. Bring logs with you when you go caving. The second tip is to listen out for this sound. Hear that? That's lava. And that's not good. If we were to dig, say, that way, I'm not sure where it is, actually. So, you know what? We're probably about to find out. Okay, we're back down again. In order to protect myself from potential lava attack, I'm going to raise that up. And I'm going to excavate like this. Okay, no lava just yet. But we're close. I can feel it in my bones. 
conveniently enough, we haven't actually stumbled upon that lava yet. One of the things that you're able to do is go into your settings and you can turn subtitles on. And you'll get an effect that comes up. It says lava pops. And you'll see an arrow. Here it is. So that is the direction. See? If I turn left, that arrow goes away. So the lava's over here. So if I keep digging this way, in all likelihood I will find it. Okay, so it's both on the left and right of me, which, which makes me inclined to suggest it's either directly beneath, which is unlikely due to how low we are, or more likely above. And I really am only hunting this down for the purposes of demonstration. Oh, gravel. Hello. Whoa, found the lava. Oh, risky, risky business it is being near lava. Always want to be careful. So I always like to give myself a wide berth from it. Sometimes I like to put up a barrier. But one of the things that then tends to happen is that you just jump straight over the barrier because you don't realise what's on the other side of it. So let's have a little scan around. What's that over there? I think there might be more gold. But I'm colourblind, so sometimes I might not be very good at spotting things correctly. I think I'm going to go along there and find out what that is. I'm pretty sure it's just gold. But I still wouldn't take umbrage at finding more gold. Just hit F3 to check what level we're at. We're at level 12. And we found diamonds. There they are. And this is what we were after this whole time. Oh my goodness, that there are monsters over there. Let's just have a look up to see whether or not we've got any that are likely to drop down on us from above. Because that could be a real problem. Okay. So let's do our best to extricate these diamonds as quickly as we can. The first thing you want to do, if you are risk averse like I am, excavate around the diamonds. Do not break the diamonds until you are certain that there is no lava underneath them. So if there's lava underneath them, you could well just drop the diamonds straight into that lava. And then you'd lose your diamonds. And if you fell in two, you'd probably die. So always pays to be risk averse and make sure you're fully prepared to excavate your diamonds in one single, well, hit. But that, that there, six diamonds. Ready for the taking. Boom. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? Ha <laughs> ha! Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So, I haven't even been playing for an hour this evening, and I've already come down here and gotten what I came for. So, I am going to gather my bits together. And I'm going to get out of here before I get killed by something, because that would that would just be my luck. Have that iron, I'll have that coal. Lapis gold. I can pick all of this up. Let's get back to the surface. Okay, on my way out. Torches, I'm looking for them being on the left. Oh, I really want to grab that iron. Once you've got your diamonds, it always feels like every additional kind of minute down here is just a little bit more risk. But this is what we do when we go caving. We go gambling. There's good gambling and bad gambling, okay? Good gambling is staying down in the cave to see what else you can get. Bad gambling is, you know, bad gambling. Torch is on the left. Torch on the left. Let's go this way. Head back to the surface. Torch is on the left. Torch on the left. That's not the left. And this is my way out. Happy, happy days. We are above ground. It is night. It is raining over there, but not over here for some reason. Oh, I'm so stressed. I'm going home. Oh... Okay, let's put some of these valuables away. What a rush. Let's go to sleep. And I'll see you in the morning and we'll talk some more. Good morning. I'm back. I'm going to smelt up some gold. And I'm going to smelt up some iron. And I'm going to put all my stuff away. Oh, potato will be useful. We will keep that. Music disc. I, oh, do I have? Yes, I can do that. Music discs. These adorable little things, you can have some fun with them. So I think, here's what you do to make a jukebox. To make a jukebox, you have to do that. And when you have one of those, oh, am I going to do it? Let me think about this. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to use one of my diamonds to make a jukebox, even though it is quite frivolous. But to put down a jukebox, if you have a music disc, you can take your music disc, right-click the jukebox, and you can play some music. This is my jam. Oh, it's cute. I like the way that bass behaves. It's pretty. It's a lovely scintillating sound, isn't it? Well, that's a really pretty piece of music, but I'm just going to make it go away so I can actually get on with recording. 
<laughs> okay, the time has come. I am going to make a diamond pickaxe. There it is. You don't get an achievement for it, but we've got one now. And now there's something very important that we have to go and do with it. But first, I'm turning my subtitles off. Let's go this way. I'm just going to very quickly grab a bucket or two. Eventually, if you hammered away at obsidian with a stone pickaxe or an iron pickaxe for long enough, you would break it. However, you would not harvest anything. In order to harvest obsidian, you need a diamond pickaxe. You need to stand there and wait for absolutely ages to get it. But you'll get it. Now I need three blocks of it. That's two blocks. And that's three blocks. What do I need those for? Well, I'll gather up this lava and I'll tell you. Also, very pleasingly, just stumbled upon a little gold block here. How cute is that? Hey, hey. I'm going to get back in my boat. And then we're going to go home again. Okay, coming back in. We are indoors. We have the obsidian. There it is. We need four obsidian, two diamonds, and a book. Okay, well, it's good that I had six diamonds. Oh, that's really lucky. Okay, give me a minute. I've got to go back and get one more obsidian. Uh... Ah, no, there is another way. There is another way of making obsidian. I will show you. First thing you'll need is a bucket of water. Second thing you'll need is a bucket of lava. So, lay the lava bucket down. Put the water on top. And the water turns the lava source block into a block of obsidian. Really useful for me at this moment in time. And now I need a book. Well, how do we make a book? I shall tell you how we make a book. We will need some paper and we will need some leather. And I will fetch some of that in the morning. Okay, so somewhere in amongst all this clutter here, I must have, surely I must have, leather. Hooray. And I will also need some sugar cane. Why do I need these things? I shall show you. You see, sugar cane when you put it in this arrangement here, it turns into paper. And if you take some paper and some leather, you can make books. I'm gonna need a lot of books. I don't need just the one of them. I will need a multitude. There's your enchanting table. And I'm sure you don't have to be a genius to figure out what this does. Embarrassingly enough, I'm still in a dirt hut with my enchanting table. So at some point in the very near future, I'm gonna to have to take the time to actually build a little bit of a base here, but I'm quite excited about that idea. But for the time being, I am going to pop the enchanting table down, say, here, and we're going to look at it. Now, see that little shape there? You might recognize that from earlier. Normally comes in blue. Lapis Lathuli. So, what do you do with an enchanting table? Well, you go up to it, you right-click it, you open it up, and you put an item in here. And then you put lapis in there. And this allows you to enchant that item. You can spend this number of levels to enchant the item and you can see we can make efficiency one we can make efficiency one we can make unbreaking one and that will provide bonuses to the efficiency i.e the speed at which the pickaxe tears through things or unbreaking which will be the durability of it however these enchantments aren't actually that powerful so we need to beef them up how do we do that we use more books in order to get optimal enchanting, you will need 15 bookshelves around our enchanting desk. Bookshelves look like this. But they are kind of difficult to make unless you've got the appropriate farms. We've got a sugarcane farm out the back with plenty of sugarcane in it. The hard part to get hold of is the leather. But thankfully we've got some cows handy as well. So I am going to have to go and do the necessary. Take down some more sugarcane. I'm not going to need to take down some more sugarcane. But I am going to need to get some more leather. And so here we see the importance of these three farms here. You need wheat to feed your cows, you need cows for leather, and you need sugarcane for your paper to make your books to get your best enchantments. Oh, looks like we've got visitors. Hello, boys. Good thing I brought my armor with me. Sometimes people just pop over and visit you. They might be wandering traders who want to sell you some stuff. Or they might be nasty, grey-skinned dudes like that who've come to murder you. But if you're, um, how do we say, adequately prepared, usually it won't take too much effort to dispatch them. Let's get to killing. <laughs> oh yes, kill each other for me. Come on, boys, let's have it. Well, game over for those dudes. Now, normally when you deal with guys like that, they'll give you some kind of ominous banner like this one. 
or that one. I'm pretty sure they always look like this. The fun thing I like to do with these is put them on the front of my shield. Put them both together, and you put the banner on it. I think it looks pretty neat. But the other thing they will do to you, if you look in the top right corner of the screen there, they curse you, in a manner of speaking. That bad omen there. All the while that's active, if you're not adequately prepared with weapons and stuff like that, do not go near a village. You will have a bad time. Because what will then happen is that a load of them will land upon the village and you will have to defend the village. Otherwise, everybody in there, including yourself, will die. And a bad time will be had by all involved. Back to work. Okay, so let's do a little bit of simple maths. We need 15 of these suckers. Each one of them is comprised of three books, which means we need 45 books, which is comprised of one leather and three paper which is three bits of sugar cane. So we need 45 bits of leather and we need 135 sugar cane. The sugar cane is easy to take care of. We've only got 19 leather at the moment though. So I'm gonna have to keep working that cow farm for a little while just to make sure we get everything we need in terms of leather. So I'll be with you again once I've done that. Yeah, I think at this point an appropriate use of my time would probably be to wait for those cows to grow up and build something a little bit less, you know, shameful for a base let's get out of this dirt hut and into something a little bit more uh a little bit more sophisticated okay we are back and some changes have been made let's have a look around inside i have added little wooden pressure plates here because when you step on those it opens the gates and you can leave without having to right click them to open and close them you still have to right click to open them in order to go in when you leave you can just walk straight out the reason why i haven't put pressure plates on the outside here is because obviously if monsters come along they can just stand on it and follow me in same story with these double doors here in the same spot as they were prior and these double doors here we can step back in here and i'll give you a nice little tour of the place here we have an armor stand here we have a couple of item frames if you have an item in an item frame, you can right click it to rotate it, which is kind of cute, or you can left click it to pop the item out and pick it up. Really handy. If you have an item in your hand that you want to place in the item frame, you just point at it and right click and it places it there. So I have my shield, my sword, fantastic, and here I have an armor stand with all of my armor on it. I'm going to point my crosshair at the relevant piece of armor that I want to pick up, say the breastplate, right click. And it goes into my inventory, point away from the armor stand, right click, and it equips. To replace it is the inverse. To craft an armor stand, you will need a smooth stone slab and one, two, three, four, five, six sticks. How do you get smooth stone slabs? Well, it's easy. First, you have to smelt some cobblestone. Cobblestone smelts into stone. Boop. Once you have stone, what you have to do is you have to then put that in the furnace, and that will smelt down into smooth stone you can make smooth stone slabs by just placing the three of them in a row like that and taking them item frames you literally just pop them on the wall with a right click put your items in them with a right click like that armor stand just pop it on the floor it will face you when you place it down so i'm going to i want to add this kind of diagonal angle here there it is and then pop your armor on it like that doink and that's fully kitted out so if i ever want to go out hunting or caving I can just pop that stuff off and put it straight on. Down here, I have all my chests. There's not a huge amount here, but it's a healthy amount. It should tide me over for a short while until I'm in a position to make a bigger, more schmancy base. Now, let's get back to the reason why I did this in the first place. Here is my enchanting bench. I'm very happy to have it at this kind of early stage in the game. What do I do with it? Well, I need to enchant weapons. We've already had a little bit of a talk through its capabilities. I'm gonna need a few things to make the enchantments better though. I'm gonna need some lapis, and I'm gonna need a load of bookshelves, just like that one. How do I make those? Well, first, I need a load of planks, and then I need a load of paper. Place sugarcane in that row, you get paper. This should be more than enough books to make as many bookshelves as I'm gonna need to get by. I'm gonna take some more planks, and how many bookshelves can I make with this? I've got 68, so divide that through by three is nearly 23, so it's 22. Bang, 22 bookshelves, more than enough to get the highest level of enchanting available. All I have to do is just put them up. 
Oh, it's very glamorous already. That's nine plus another six. That's 15. That's the minimum you need to get your level 30 enchantments. So now we're kitted out with our bookshelves. This looks fancy enough to be getting on with. Let's see what enchantments we can get. Here's the lapis. Here's the diamond pick. Let's have a look. Pop that in there. Pop the lapis in and <gasps> fortune three. Okay, so the fortune enchantment is a good one to have because what that means is that when you harvest things like lapis, coal, redstone, emeralds, and more importantly, diamonds, most importantly, diamonds, when you break that block, it increases your chances of getting more of that item out of that ore block. So with the fortune three enchantment, you can get anywhere between one and four diamonds. So I'm going to take that and see what else comes along with it. Shift and click. Unbreaking 3, Efficiency 4, and Fortune 3. That is a good diamond pickaxe. Very pleased with that for a first time around. You can enchant all sorts of stuff. I can even enchant books. Bane of Arthropods 4, Quick Charge 1, Bane of Arthropods 1. These are all enchantments that you can put on weapons. I'm going to make another couple of iron pickaxes. I'm going to enchant them. Efficiency 4 and Fortune 3 iron pickaxe. Can I have a silk touch one, please? Oh, I'm going to have to settle for this level 2 enchantment, which is efficiency 2 and unbreaking 2. Okay, this is a good combination, but I will enchant this third iron pick and see what I get. Efficiency 2. Okay, so I can just rock it through and dig that little bit quicker. I'm going to keep my paper, my books, my lapis in there. I'm going to keep my spruce planks, go and knock up some more bread, grab some torches, put my gear on. I'm going to have a quick nap and then I'm going caving again. I've got some more goodies to find. As I get going on another brave adventure, I will bid you adieu. Catch you in the next one. Hope you found this one educational, and I'd really love to hear from you in the comments. What is it that you've learned, if anything? What is it that you think I missed, if anything? Be good, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, take care, bye-bye.